cheers and get pumped because today we are talking about the sport where you sit down and stare at paper. Also for people who like tea and coffee, yeah, this is the sport for you. It's called reading. So I'm here today to talk about one book, one book only. This one right here, The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Now, let me read you the back cover. My name is Quoth. I think that's how you pronounce it. I have stolen Princess back from sleeping Barrow Kings. I burned down the town of Trebon. I've spent the night with Falurian and left with both my sanity and my life. I was expelled from the university at a younger age than most people are allowed in. I tread paths by moonlight that others fear to speak of during the day. I have talked to gods, loved women, and written songs that make the minstrels weep. You may have heard of me. That's so epic, hold on, yeah, that's even, that's half of it. So begins a tale, unequaled in fantasy literature, the story of a hero told in his own voice. It is a tale of sorrow, a tale of survival, a tale of one man's search for meaning in his universe, and how that search, and the indomitable will that drove it, will give birth to a legend. A legend. So you can open the book here and get this really cool page where you just see a bunch of awesome authors who have said awesome things about this book and get ready because I'm about to say more awesome things about this book. Let us go over what I like and don't like about the story so much even though it was dope. Okay, let me just start by saying that I have not been into a book like I have been in this one in a long, long time. Mostly what's what's done that to me is because I have been very spoiled and very picky in my taste and if something doesn't really peak it right away then I just kind of put it down and never look at it again. But the feel of this book was just right. It was, it was good. It just felt good. It was like, you know when you hold a nice cup of tea or coffee in your hand and it's nice and warm in the morning and then you just wake up from it and that, fe that look on my face right now, like that's what it felt like to be in the book. A lot of other books kind of really, 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 really tried to be fantasy. They try really, really hard, but this book was. It just was. I loved the feel of it, and I think that's what kept me reading. It didn't have to be super action-y. It didn't have to be filled with magic, but it did promise action, and it did promise magic, and it did all that stuff, and it fulfilled it, and it did it great. And just, I can't tell if I'm like into kid stuff or young adult stuff, or, you know, grown-up stuff, but this was somewhere a mix in between all of it, because it wasn't quite like Harry Potter, like, this dude almost died, like, multiple times, but it wasn't, like, super adult, like Game of Thrones, there's no, like, nudity, and there was no blood, or gore, or guts, or any kind of stuff like that, like, some things died here and there, but stuff has to die for the sake of a story, eh. He sets it up so well, like, this, this thing that I read on the back of the book, right here, he's like, I've done this, and this, and all this crap that just sounds awesome, and he's like, <laughs> you might have heard of me. After that point, I was just like, dude, I have to listen to this guy, and that that started the page turning, and that's what hooked me in. Now this Quoth guy, I think that's how you pronounce it, Quoth, he sounds like a cliche character if I were to summarize him for you, but you really have to read it to kind of grasp the fact that this kid is pretty, uh, pretty unique. He's that kind of underdog character. He's super witty. He's super fun to watch and listen to and imagine in your head. And he's just smarter and better than everybody. It's that kind of thing, but it's not cliche. You have to read it. A good main character. So let's talk about the world that he lives in and that we kind of get to play in. He does a really good job of making it feel small enough so that we know where everything is that he's talking about. When he talks about it on a small level, it makes it feel big, but then it also is containable. So it's really easy to kind of know where everything is without even using the map that's in the book. Now let's talk about the pacing of the book. The pacing was so fast and I loved it. The chapters are very short and very condensed and very focused and I loved it. I'm the kind of guy who likes to be rewarded for reading. It felt really good to be like flip, 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 done with the chapter and you move on to something else. You know exactly what the chapter is going to be about. It doesn't like dilly dally in between everything. It's just one awesome chunk of story at a time. And the book just kept moving and moving. And right when you would get bored of stuff, the author, Mr. Patty Rothfuss, always knew, hey, I'm anticipating my reader getting bored here. Let's throw something at him. I read this in about like four days and it's like a few hundred pages, like 600, 700. Pretty good for me, okay. However, however, let us talk about the things that I just kind of 
disliked as well. Only to be fair, this book is still awesome, but it has to be fair. My biggest thing about this book is that the beginning was so slow to me. To get to that bad arse part that he talked about when like, oh I did this, and this, and this, you might have heard of me. That took about like 60 pages to get into. And while that may be a small portion of the book in relation to the rest of the chunk of the book, it's still kind of a lot to get started. But it did do a really good job at setting this guy up as a mystery character because now I wanted to know more and then that just like projected me into the rest of the book. So it's kind of like a negative and a positive. In the beginning, I think you should hook your people in the first sitting. The first time I read this book, I quit and I stopped reading it because I couldn't get past the 60 pages. I got to page 50 on the first day and I just didn't have much time, so I kind of put it down and never came back to it. So let me tell you right now, if you're gonna read this book, commit to reading at least like 60, 70, 80 pages, maybe in the first sitting. That's my, that's my recommendation. So don't, don't get too, don't get too frustrated with the beginning. Sit through it. It's gonna be okay, it's worth it. Trust me. In the beginning, it sounded like this dude was gonna be killing a bunch of people, but there really wasn't. He promised like all these awesome things, and it was a great story, but they weren't this big, huge epicness of awesome bowl. You know what I'm saying? There's no bowl of awesomeness. I don't know how to say it. Like, I'm satisfied, but it just wasn't as cool. But I know it's coming in the next books. I know it's coming. So that's why I'm sticking with it. I kind of started feeling comfortable with the characters, like knowing what might happen, being able to kind of predict things, which isn't a bad thing, but after just watching like five straight seasons of Game of Thrones, it's kind of like, you know, somebody might actually die. Y you might gotta kill a character up in here. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes that's just how it is. People just die sometimes, you know? And let me just say the ending third of the book, I kind of had some beef with, but I'm gonna kind of keep that vague because that's gonna be in the spoiler section in the next video for after you read this book. But that is all I got for my dislikes. Straight up right now, it's totally worth it to sit through the first 60 pages. It's totally worth it that people don't die every 50 pages like in Game of Thrones. Let me just tell you who this book is gonna be for, okay? Even though you probably have a great idea if you wanna read this book, but you should. This book is for fantasy lovers. Anybody that loves fantasy or sci-fi or stuff that doesn't actually exist and takes you somewhere completely different than like this book is for you because it does that completely. It'll fulfill your cravings till the end of the book. It's super believable. It's awesome. Two, this book is for people who like character driven stories. You kind of get attached to the characters. You, you care for this kid's situation and what he goes through. It just hooks you in. It's just very mysterious and character driven. There's no like huge epic battles. So if you're looking for like battle stuff, battle novels, you're not going to get it here. But this is really good for people who want to love their characters. Now the age range is probably about like 13 to up. Like you got to know your kids and if they can handle some kind of dark imagery then that's going to be great. That's fine. You know if they can handle that kind of stuff and they want to explore their imagination and kind of grow that then this is a great place to do it. You know it's not too gory. It's not too much anything like that. Let your kids read it. And it could be a great gateway fantasy novel for anybody that you know kind of likes the John Green route. This book is is really accessible to anybody. It's not really like you know high sci-fi where they explain like carbon accelerators and hyper extension module thingy blitters. This is just fantasy that they explain really well and it's really fun to be a part of. If you don't usually read fantasy, give this book a try. It's pretty good. I mean, a lot of people will say they're not fantasy people, but then they watch Harry Potter and it's like freaking awesome. Supposedly this thing has like the rights for a TV show, so you might be seeing it, you know? You might watch it anyway, so give it a try. Okay. In conclusion, I just kind of want to tell you the context of how I read this story. I was at the beach. This was my beach book. I was up on the beach, and instead of like looking at the waves, I was like, like re reading this book like crazy. You can ask my girlfriend, you can ask my mom, you can ask my family. My little cousin would come up to me and ask, why do you read so much? And I was like, man, I haven't read it forever, but this book is dope. I can't put it down. And I eventually got through it on vacation and I was like, oh my gosh, I need the next one. So I went out and I got the next one like the day I finished it. It's that good. And so I'm reading this one, the next one currently. I will do one on that when it comes to that time when I finish it. Just want to let you know that I will be doing a discussion video about this and it's not going to be a discussion because you're not here to discuss it with me, why not? So I can talk a little bit more because this is just kind of for non-spoilers and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to see that after you've read the book, then go give it a watch. So if you want to get this book, start reading it today like I recommend because it's just a, a good story. Then the link is in the description 
you should just get it now. You know, Amazon is great and uh, it's only like eight bucks, I think. So get your hands on it. These versions are even cheaper. Why are you waiting? There's a good story out there. There's another life to live. This dude's life, you could be living it and it's awesome. Thanks for watching. Go get the book. The name of the wind, everybody. Goodbye.